Okay, so let's flip over to another section. We're going to dive a little deeper into where his shooting efficiency has come from and how it's changed. We'll go to the shooting overall tab. This is going to give you an overview of more of his shot attempt stats. So we can start with effective field goal percentage, which is a measure of his efficiency just from field goal attempts. Points per shot attempt, remember, combines field goal efficiency from field goal attempts and trips to the line. Effective field goal percentage will just tell you efficiency from field goal attempts. So in Bam's case, we can see 31st percentile his first year, 71st his second year, and then this slight dip this past season. Now if we compare that to his points per shot attempt, just as a rough comparison, we can see 46, 80, 65. So a fair amount higher percentiles when you include his efficiency from drawing fouls than just looking at field goal attempts, which we'll get to a little bit later on, but that immediately tells you something. Then as we go to the right in this table, we see we can look at the two-point percentage and three-point percentage breakdown. What's he shooting on twos versus threes? In Bam's case, he's not taking very many threes, so these numbers are essentially identical. The interesting, the most interesting part for me here is this assisted section. We can look at what percentage of his made shots were assisted overall, and then also by the a basic shot location category, rim, mid-range, three. What's very interesting to me about this section for BAM is that these numbers haven't really changed that much, even as his usage has gone up, as we saw in the last section. That's a surprise, right? He has taken more shots, taken on more of the offense, but has maintained the same level of being assisted. So that's another question that should go on our list, which is how has that happened? How has his assisted rate stayed the same? despite the increase in usage. Okay, so let's dive a little deeper into the shooting stats. Here we only were really looking at twos and threes on this table, but we can get more granular in terms of location, starting with the frequency tab, which shows us where BAM's shots are coming from. You can see we divide it into buckets that are large enough to still tell us something, but small enough to really differentiate between the different types of shots you'll see on the court. So shots at the rim, pretty straightforward. Then mid-range shots are divided into short mid-range and long mid-range shots. Short mid-range shots, typically you can think of them as floaters, runners. A lot of times post moves end up in short mid-range. Long mid-range shot your more typical long jumper. And then the combination of those two columns. So if you want to, you can just look at mid-range as a combined bucket. And then threes are also split up. Corner threes, which are a shorter shot in the NBA, and non-corner threes. With Bam, given that he's not really a three-point shooter, you can see only 1% or 2% of his shots have come from behind the three-point line over his career. The really interesting part is what's happening around the basket. So his rookie year, if we look at shots at the rim, 85th percentile in the frequency of shot attempts at the rim and the percentage of his shots that are coming right at the basket. He's very rim-oriented, which fits with what we saw earlier, a low-usage player. He's playing mostly at the basket. The following year, that number decreased slightly, and now what's interesting is this year, the numbers dropped off a fair amount, 10 percentage points from 69% of his shots to 59% of his shots. And you can see that 
only places him slightly above average for big men. Well, what's changed? It's pretty clear in the next column, his short mid-range shots have gone up a lot. Rim shots went down by 10 percentage points, short mid-range shots up by 8 percentage points to the point that this year he's ranked in the 94th percentile for big men in short mid-range shots. That floater runner post-move range is where Adebayo is getting a lot of his shots. This is something else we can put onto the question list. A big increase in short mid-range shots. Why? So that's something that we want to address in from video. We want to see what types of shots are these, where are they coming from, why has he ended up with so many more. Likely this is a byproduct of the increase in usage as you increase your shot attempts, as you increase how much offense you're trying to create. You're not going to get those high percentage looks at the rim so easily. So that means those shots have to go elsewhere. Given that Bam is not a long jump shooter, you can see long mid-range shots have remained pretty low. The percentile's gone up a lot. That's partly because big men aren't taking many long mid-range jumpers, so a small change can make a big difference in percentiles for big men. And also, likely because the share of those long jumpers across the league is coming down over the years. So almost 90% of his shots, over 90% of his shots, have come either at the rim or in short mid-range. We can see that actually on his shot chart tab. If we just look at where the frequency of his shots are being taken from, it's pretty clear he's a paint player. Okay, jumping from here, we can look at his shooting accuracy. So this is the same exact table broken down by the same locations, but instead of showing where he's taking his shots from, it shows the field goal percentage in any of those given locations. The story we can try to answer with the combination of the frequency stats and the field goal percentage stats is why did his effective field goal percentage go up so much from between year one and year two, and then why has it decreased slightly in year three? The answer is a mix of these last two tables but let's start with what's shown in this table. The field goal percentage in his rookie year compared to his sophomore year. And it's clear that across the board he became a better shooter. His finishing got better, went up from 63% to 68%. But so did his mid-range shooting. He was a poor mid-range shooter 27% on the 8th percentile for big men in that rookie year. That jumped up to middle of the pack in his second year. Then this year, it's not clear where the decrease came from if you just look at this table. His mid-range shooting, 39% in both seasons. And his rim finishing has gotten even better, up from 68% at the rim to 72%. So why is effective field goal percentage down? That comes from what we just saw in the shooting frequency table. We can flip back to it and see that because those higher efficiency rim shots have, are down so much and the lower efficiency short mid-range shots are up, even if he's shot better in those individual locations, he's taking a different profile of shots. And that different profile of shots skews slightly less efficient which is why that effective field goal percentage has gone down this year. Now, as always, that has to be viewed in context of his role in general. Of course, like we just said, of course he's going to be taking a different profile of shots if his usage rate is much higher. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It can be seen as a consequence of, okay, the ball's in Bam's hands more, He's taking more shots. He's taking on more of an offensive role. And naturally, that's going to result in him taking some more difficult shots. But if he can finish those at a good rate, and if the byproduct of, of him having the ball tends to be shots at the rim, 
and passes for others, it's okay that sometimes that's also a short mid-range shot. 